Hello everybody, this is the guy, and today I'm showing you how I paint my locomotives. So as you can see here, we got a consist of F7 A and B units coming out of the shop. And this is all custom with my own decals that I made. It's very affordable, you don't need an airbrush or anything, just some paint from the hardware store. So let's get to it. Okay, so these are um, somewhat older F7 units. Uh, they're Bachmann's, they come with the DCC. They're great locomotives, but I am like, I'm not sure which road names to run. So instead of choosing a single road name like the Norfolk Western or the Great Northern or Pennsylvania, or, you know, and so on, I'm just going to make my own railroad name and paint scheme with its own decal set. So, um, first thing you do, obviously, you know, take off all the shells. I'm doing two locomotives at once, but uh, periodically I'll only show one to uh, save time. But the Bachman's really easy to take off. Um, if you're following along with this video or just looking at, um, you know, techniques of how I do it, make sure you look at the instructions of the locomotive that you have, because not every locomotive is as easy to take off as just pulling the shell off. We'll start with the things you need. Some kind of container. I use little muffin tins from the grocery store. 99% isopropyl alcohol. And uh, a stiffer toothbrush for smoothing and stuff later. I'll, I'll explain that. First thing you do, you know, load that container up with isopropyl alcohol. I find that alcohol does the best because it doesn't like melt or damage the plastic. I've used a paint thinner before and it kind of like warped the plastic before when I was um, first trying this out. So alcohol, it, it seems to take a little longer, but it, it works and it's pretty safe. So just completely submerge the locomotive shells like so. And they're going to sit for a couple hours. Now with this method, you don't want to rush anything, okay? It, it takes a while especially this alcohol soaking portion. So periodically, like about every hour or so, or two hours, I, I flip the locomotives to make sure the solution is basically soaking in on both sides. And then uh, this is the next day, so I pull the locomotives out. And you might need to do this in two steps like I did because, again, you got to be patient with it. The longer it sets, the easier it's going to be. But I take... Uh, I take a spare toothbrush and I just scrub, scrub, scrub. It pulls the decals off, it pulls the paint off. Some paint is harder to take off than others. Like the silver type stuff is really easy to come off. Decals come off, no problem. And on, on this section here, I'm using a very stiff metal brush, but I'm not pushing down when I do it. I let the brush do the work because some stuff needs a little more uh, scrubbing. So. After noticing not all the paint can come off, I soaked it again for another couple hours and then went back in. You can see it's it's starting to be more of the uh, that grayish model plastic color. This Norfolk Western, it has um, completely black plastic that it was molded with, so that one was pretty easy. But the Great Northern, that one had staining and flaking everywhere. I, I think that one was the older one or it's been through more you know tough times on my railroad, so it was a little damaged. But once they're all completely uh, scrub free of paint, um, I let them dry for a little bit. And here's how I'm going to make little holders. I use uh, like uh, wooden door jam dowels or whatever they're called from you know the hardware store, some duct tape. I basically am going to wrap the end enough with the duct tape. And you can do this with anything. Like you can you can shove up a bolt and like. Uh, a lug nut or something like that. Any any way you can make it, but I found this is an easy way because I have lots of duct tape around. I basically just wrap the duct tape around and as you can see I test fit the inside of the shell. So I want it wide enough at the top to where it's snug and holds the shell in place. So while I'm painting it doesn't move or anything like that. And you know we do that for both the sticks. So right here see put it on. Boom nice snug fit and uh, it's ready for, for priming. So, now that I got both of them done, the, um, the priming phase, we don't wanna just use a spray paint with like the paint and primer. We, wanna, we want it to be good, right? So, I use this Rust-Oleum Universal Bonding Primer right here. Sticks to everything. And then the color we're gonna make these trains is um, 
a Krylon Satin Peacock Blue. I'm not going to show the spray painting, you know, portion of it. Everyone knows how to spray paint. Here's uh, the first couple coats of the primer. Now, I made a mistake, if you haven't noticed. I left the windows and headlights in, so... Uh, make sure you, when you disassemble your shells, you completely take everything off. But I take that stiff brush, and sometimes I my spraying technique isn't 100%, and you're supposed to maintain that distance while you're spraying, like, 6 to 10 inches, right? Well, sometimes the wind really picks up, or there's a breeze, and you're like, oh, well, that's just great. It ruined it. The brush, I use the brush to get rid of those, uh, those bumps. I, I can't explain it very well, but sometimes when you're spray painting... You get these little bumps and like uh, splatter. The brush is really good at smoothing those out. And you want to do it on the priming phase because otherwise you'll notice it really, like really noticeable when you actually put your color on. So here, like I said, I forgot to take the windows out. I'm going to have to soak those in a solution and clean those up. So make sure you take everything apart. Don't, don't be like me. It just adds extra steps. I do that to both the locomotives. Now that we got the primer on, we're ready for painting. Now, I use the wooden uh, dowels, door jam things, whatever those are, little spacers, because the bottom is very thin, and I can just shove that into a piece of foam or shove it in, like, a bookcase. That way, it, the whole locomotive can freestand and dry without, like, leaning against something. It's time for the peacock blue. Now you do this. I did it in about four, five different coats. Very, very light. Remember, you don't want to put it on heavy. Always use the directions on the spray can because every spray can brand is different. So this is after like a second or third coat. You can see it's starting to get more uh, deep and rich in the color there. And again, like the breeze picked up while I was out there. So I went and got the, the stiff brush toothbrush here, the, the bristles, and use the bristles to kind of smooth out the bumps. You don't want to do this after it's cured or dried for longer than 15 minutes because then it's not going to do anything. I did it when it was still kind of tacky and it works. Now that we got this, I'm going to hand paint everything with enamel paints. And I'm using metallic silver from Testors. I get this from Hobby Lobby and I found a, a brush that my daughter uses for her painting. So it's not anything fancy. And I have a magnifying glass because my eyesight isn't what it used to be. But I'm going to basically do some detail work on the locomotive here where anything that would be metal in my opinion for my railroad we would leave metallic silver right and then we were painting the rest of the locomotive so these like vent grill things up here the um i don't know what they're called the the exhaust vents for the locomotive i paint those silver and then i'll do the step ladders everywhere and then the front where the the coupler hooks up to the front of this uh, locomotive. And then we'll fast forward this because this is, I mean, this takes a while. You want to be patient with this, especially if you're doing stuff by hand. When you make mistakes, it's okay. You can cover up the mistakes later, especially if you're planning on weathering your locomotives like I am. So I take my time, I move it around. The reason why I use enamels is because it's very liquidy and it gets in the nooks and crannies. So I I always use enamels on almost everything I do. It's kind of pricier than acrylics, but I really recommend it for this kind of work where you like your brushes can't reach into certain nooks and crannies, especially on end scale. I do everything as you see the both sides there, even the front. I forget what it's called. I'm not as versed as some people, but. That thing where the front coupler hooks up, and now I'm going to do the top vents. Now, when they, um, when you get these from the factory, right, when you buy them brand new, they're all molded the same color, and, like, they're all painted the same color. I kind of like that, but I think when you paint things a little differently sometimes, it adds, like, depth and character, and that's what we're doing here. So we're going to paint all of these fans or uh, intake fans. I, I don't I don't know what they're called. Like I love trains, but like I don't know all the terminology. So I'm going to paint all these and just by dipping my brush and letting the liquid the enamel, the liquidy paint just kind of soak and run into the nooks and crannies. That's why I like this paint so much, but I go ahead and do all the the fans on the top. I'm leaving the train horns as they are because they didn't stick out enough for me to paint 
here, I'm putting on the decals now. I'll maybe make a video of how I make train decals later with my Crick Cut machine. It's a very awesome little like self-cutting machine that you just basically put a design into and it cuts. I made this with vinyl, with a sticky back vinyl. It took me about 15 different tries to actually get the right size. So I wasted a bit of paper, but it was worth it. Now that I got the right size, everything's saved, so I know what will fit on what locomotive. So I basically use the Cricut to uh, cut out my decals, which is WM, my locomotive's gonna be White Mountain. And we also have a mountain shape in the front. Now when I put them on, I just use a little scalpel. I try not to press too hard because then it leaves that little, uh, that little cut or bump into the decal. I also use a brush to um, make the adhesive stick as I pull the scalpel away. And you can see, you know, I'm kind of doing this just like on the fly. I'm not sure where I want the number or anything like that. You saw me measure in different areas, but I think this looks okay. I put those back on our little homemade painting sticks and I pull out uh, Rust-Oleum Crystal Clear Enamel. And this is so everything's protected and so my decals don't come off. And I give it a few light coats. I recommend the Crystal Clear stuff. I don't recommend using a matte kind of clear coat because you can see it. It's actually not clear. Unless you're going for that look. It, it kind of makes it look weathered or dirty. Maybe I'll go back and do that. But uh, the clear coat takes a bit to dry. So as I'm doing that, I pull the trucks off and the, uh, the fuel tank off of the locomotives. And I'm going to use the same metallic silver here from Testers, the enamel paint. Just paint the trucks. And it's really nice because it's liquidy. I put it on kind of heavy here and it just kind of soaks into the nooks and crannies and I only paint the outsides and the very edges. That way there's no chance of paint getting on my wheels and causing a problem later. But painting the trucks, I do have like silver trucks that came with like some plus models from Bachman, but that, that silver, that gray plastic doesn't look as fresh as like actually painting it. It gives you depth when you paint it. I painted all the, uh, the trucks for every, everything on the locomotive. Here's the locomotive without all the stuff. It's time to put it all back together after everything is dry. I did make one mistake. I didn't allow the fuel tank to dry enough because I put a couple heavy coats on it. So right there, I'm already getting some of that on my finger and I don't realize it. That's how enamel paint is. Like I said, be very patient with stuff. And in a moment, I'll show you the mistake I made on one of the sides here, right there, the smud near the mountain, but that's the finished product. If you've enjoyed watching this video, please go ahead and drop a like. And if you would like to stay updated for upcoming videos, feel free to subscribe. Thank you, and I'll see you next time.